so what we're really doing at, at Coach the Cross Continents is helping these communities. When I say community empowerment, we're helping them strengthen these societal bonds through purposeful play so they can better look out for one another. Um, and if we can do that, if we can empower communities and create community empowerment um, through both their actions, through purposeful play and help them create policies and bring these policies to life, it will ensure everyone's human rights. This is Coaches Across Continents Virtual Learning Podcast, supporting our 28 year-round resources for our community partners in more than 60 countries around the world. Today with your host, Marcus Beach. Hello, and thank you for listening to Coaches Across Continents podcast channel. Today, we'll be talking about CAC's four pillars that are the basis for purposeful play. And more importantly, how purposeful play empowers communities and ensures human rights. I'm very delighted to be speaking today with Brian Suskiewicz, the CEO of Coaches Across Continents. And he has been a vital part of the team that has developed the framework we will be talking about today. So welcome, Brian, to our virtual studio table. Hi, Marcus, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to sharing today about how purposeful play can empower communities to ensure human rights and how we came up with this whole framework um, and then how we use this to, to help our programming all over the world. Uh, and in this whole process, CAC is an ally in designing, developing and implementing policies and actions that ensure human rights globally. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Brian, for yeah introducing yourself and introducing a little bit the topic we'll be talking about today. Um, and th during this process, we will we will get deeper and dig deeper into into it. Uh, but since we don't want this podcast to become too long, I will come straight to my first question. How how did this idea of creating a framework to recognize and ensure human rights come to life? Uh, you said that CAC was an ally with 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 uh, other organizations. So can you please share a little bit of history with us? I think these uh, these guidelines that we're we're now releasing um, it's really an extension of what coaches across continents has been saying and doing and practicing uh, over our first decade and. CAC has really been sort of at the forefront of policy development and, and implementation, as well as uh, individual protection. We've worked with UNICEF as a pioneering member in, in helping them create the international safeguards for children in sport. We've helped develop child rights policies for all of our partners in more than 60 countries. And we've been a, a global leader in UN SDG number five, gender equity, through our Ask for Choice initiative. Um, but like any good organization, it's never good to sort of sit back and say, oh, we've already done this, we've already done that, or we've got that. Um, community empowerment and protection, it's, it's a process. So we want, we want to continue as an organization to investigate best, best practices and hopefully to be able to further ourselves and the whole sport for development and community development fields. Um, this past year, this, so these, this framework really came out of a, a partnership that we, we've started this past year with the Asian Football Confederation and the UNHCR. And it's, we're working in Bangladesh, both with Bangladeshi children and coaches, but there's an aspect of this partnership where we're working in the Rohingya refugee camp, which is the largest refugee camp in the world with over a million people. Um, and it's within this, this context that I've really gotten to learn a lot more about the UNHCR. Um, and they're obviously a very excellent and well-respected organization. And they've got an extremely well thought out concept called community-based protection. Um, now the UNHCR does work mostly in, in refugee camps, obviously, um, and in emergency situations. But their community-based protection got me to thinking how CAC is doing what we're doing, why we're doing it, both in emergency and non-emergency situations. Um, and that's really how we were able to sort of fill in the gaps of, of our policies and our frameworks. Um, and, and what I think you'll see is as we look at these guidelines a little bit closer, Marcus, 
is this is an extension of our existing philosophies and methodology. Um, it's, an it's an extension of our child protection and, and peace for child rights and gender equality policies. Um, but it also sets up the framework so that we can ensure all human rights through purposeful play. Okay. Yeah. Wow. There are a lot of <laughs> a lot of different aspects and a lot of different uh, words. And I hope that the uh, four pillars and the diagram that we will post together with uh, on YouTube when we when we publish this this podcast uh, will help to for people to follow our words and your words um, of of explaining all of that. Um, I would I would like to go now a little bit step by step and pick a couple of of words and and keywords that you have mentioned uh, in your in your previous answer. Uh, and I think that can help us to to explain the the whole framework. Um, two words you mentioned was community based protection and also community empowerment. Could you uh, explain a little bit more what you, what that means and and how does that and what it means especially in this context? Definitely, and I think I think those are that's probably the key to this to this whole document is the the concept of community empowerment, and it's it's the idea that a community understands the individuals within that community best and that the best people to take care of one another are each other, the people within that community. And if you think about it in, in a practical way, uh, when you get into a difficult situation in your life, you have somebody or a few different people you would turn to. You've got your own trusted network. Um, likewise, within a community, there is a built up uh, network of societal bonds that help them through um, good and bad situations. So. Community empowerment is this concept of a shared sense of responsibility. Um, it's helping communities and encouraging them to take an active protective role of all the individuals in their society. Um, it helps to build sharing communities. Um, and most importantly, it helps to recognize the rights of everyone within that community and to protect them um, and give them safety from, from any form of abuse. Uh, so what we're really doing at, at Coach the Cross Continents is helping These communities, when I say community empowerment, we're helping them strengthen these societal bonds through purposeful play so they can better look out for one another. Um, and if we can do that, if we can empower communities and create community empowerment um, through both their actions, through purposeful play and help them create policies and bring these policies to life, it will ensure everyone's human rights. Um, and then finally, I said it right at the beginning, community empowerment is a process. It's, a, it's always continuing and evolving. Um, just like coaches across continents uh, ideas on this, you know, we didn't we didn't say, oh, we've got a child rights policy. That's enough. It's always continually thinking, how can we do things better? So I think that that's hopefully you get a good idea of what, what we mean by community empowerment. Yeah, and I think also um, uh, what I heard from your from your explanation is like to also Uh, look closer at what the conditions of the community are like that they live in and that they operate in uh, instead of like having a policy that is like created outside and then brought into the community and said now like, okay this one this this is what you need to follow now is is that mm -hmm. what, did I understand that correctly yeah very very much I think that it's it's got to be their policy um, that they have ownership of um, that they believe in and so Our role at Coach Across Continents is really more to be an ally in helping them develop these policies as opposed to an outsider policy coming in and just saying, do this, do that. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's really ownership from that community. You're correct. Yeah. Um, when I look again at the, at the diagram uh, with these four pillars, uh, I can see that there's a lot of um, familiar concepts and words, as you also mentioned, things that CAC has been doing over the past 10 years. Uh, since since coaches across continents started words like theory of change uh, self-directed learning methodology um, and so uh, I'm, I'm I'm wondering now I would like to ask like how um, like how does the uniqueness of this framework lie in the fact to to bring these four pillars together like what what is what is new now about that because on the one hand these things have existed but but What is actually yeah. the, the new thing that comes with it now? You're right. A, a lot of this stuff has existed and, and we've spent a tremendous amount of time and expertise from, from outside experts, from our own experts in building all of these things. Um, but I think what this does is, is sort of puts it in a, in a big picture. Um, you can now see the forest through the trees, to, to use an English, an English saying. Mm -hmm. um, and so it takes everything we've done to date and explains how it fits together. Um, and from that um, and from these concepts, 
Um, we had created a child protection policy and a women's rights policy. Um, but I think most importantly, what this, these guiding principles will do is it sets the framework to set up and, and, and allow us to work both within CAC and with all of our partners globally to help them build new policies and practices on what's important to them um, while still falling underneath the same umbrella. So not necessarily just child rights and, and gender equality rights, but how do they protect the most vulnerable people? It could be children or women and girls, as I mentioned. It could be people with disabilities, the elderly. It could be uh, ethnic or religious minorities, uh, people that get discriminated against for sexual orientation, the LGBTQ community, and on and on. So this is, this is the framework that everything else will grow from, um, so to speak. Okay. So it's a it's a way of like more generalizing it also and and broadening broadening it, Am yeah, I right? Think, exactly. I think broadening is a, is an excellent one. I think there's a lot of people that say you need a you must have a gender rights policy, you must have a child rights policy, and so people say yes, yes, I've got those two things, but yeah. really it's important to be able to protect everyone within that community. Um, mm -hmm. And there are you know obviously there are a lot of vulnerable populations, whether that's um, refugees or uh, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, sexual orientation, elderly, disabled, you know, there's all these different ones. And, and this is a framework to protect everybody. Previously, I, we briefly touched on the aspect um, that that these these new approach tries to stronger recognize and consider the local circum circumstances for ensuring human rights. Could you explain a little bit more, like how that also looks in practice? Like mm. to give probably one or two examples. Yeah, you know, I learned a tremendous amount from the UNHCR, and they work primarily in emergency situations. Um, But what we've done is trying to create this so it can work in, in all circumstances from community development um, in, in what we, I guess, quote, you know, n you know normal societies or, or also in emergency situations. But everywhere around the world has its own uniqueness from history, uh, culturally, religiously, politically, traditionally, um, that have all influenced where they were, um, where they are currently, and hopefully where they want to get to. Um, as a society and then how that ensures human rights. And as I mentioned, um, this is a continual process. If you look anywhere around the world, I don't think there's anywhere that has guaranteed everyone equality, um, which is what we're all striving for. Um, and so uh, what this will allow us is to be able to work across the, the context of Coach Across Continent. So we can work in uh, emergency situations in Bangladesh. We can work in community development in North or South America or Africa. Um, to protect who our partners want to best protect. Some are really focused on exclusively on girls or women. Some are working exclusively on uh, people with disabilities. So this is really a framework, um, you used the word broadening before, which I loved, uh, you know, to allow everybody. Um, and so I think I think for us, it's, it's going to allow us to work in every context globally um, to protect whatever group in that context needs protecting while also appreciating where groups were, where they are and where they want to get to. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brian, for, for explaining that and, and uh, yeah, putting that also into the bigger framework or picture. Um, I'm coming now to, to my final question, I think. Um, we have previously also talked Uh, quite a bit about the community empowerment and you've explained uh, what it means and how it's an, an ongoing process. Um, if I look at the at the chart again, I can see how community empowerment is like in in constant connection and relation to to with the different uh, policies and with the different uh, rights like child rights policy, women's rights and so on. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain a little bit more or how, how this interaction look looks like or what this interaction looks like in practice and, and how mm -hmm. these two aspects depend on each other. 
Definitely. You know, as I mentioned, community empowerment, you know, is about strengthening and building caring communities that protects all the rights of all the individuals in that community. And they do go hand in hand. Um, it's also, I think the biggest one is to strengthen and empower community. Everyone within that community um, must be empowered. And by empowering one group of people, you don't diminish the power of another. It's, this is not like eating a pie um, where it gets split. It's if you can empower two groups or three groups or four groups, you're, you're doubling or tripling how strong that community becomes. So I think they feed off each other. You know, when you empower a community that protects everybody, um, mm -hmm. that community becomes stronger. So it, it, it just keeps building off itself. Um, and then in practice, you know, I think Coach Across Continent's role, um, not uh, living, residing, and, and necessarily being from that community is that of an ally to act as a as a mouthpiece, as a mentor, to help communities, um, you know, to be a mirror, if they will, to help them develop their policies, to bring those policies into action, to implement um, programming that can be run and, and owned by the community to benefit the people of that community. Um, and if we can do that, I think we've done our job. So, so these policies really um, is what's going to help coach the cross continents, help our partners all over the world. And by ensuring all human rights, we're going to have stronger communities around the world um, and hopefully have a, have a much stronger, stronger global society. Great. Thank you, Brian, Yeah, for, for bringing uh, more light onto this uh, quite complex um, framework and, and chart uh, that we that we are having in front of us. Uh, that was that was very helpful. Um, so, yeah, I hope this interview has helped you and inspired you to look at either at your own child rights or women's rights policy uh, and how this ties into community development, um, but also probably broadening your view to not just look at child rights and women's rights, but see what other groups are there in your community that, that might need protection. Um, and yeah, Brian, I hope I can welcome you to our virtual podcast table again, again yeah. sometime in the near future. So thank you for being with us today. Marcus, definitely. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. If you would like to dive deeper into this topic uh, and possibly develop or evolve your child rights policy, uh, look out for our child rights policy development resource that you will post on your workplace partner page later this year. If you have found and listened to this interview on our YouTube channel and would like to know more about coaches across continents, please email to info at coachesacrosscontinents.org for more information and we will gladly get back to you. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you for listening to this podcast and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.